Hi, it's Bailey from Glowforge. And Nick from Glowforge. And welcome to another Glowforge printing show. Um, today we are going to show you how to onboard a new material. So what we mean by that is you're printing with something that's not a proof grade material, so it doesn't have that handy dandy sticker that tells your Glowforge exactly what to do. Um, so you could use the techniques that we're gonna go through today for anything, mm -hmm. uh, a rock you pick up off the ground, uh, a piece of plywood from the hardware store. But today we decided um, that we dig into EVA foam. A popular so material. Yes, it's very Much popular. Much underutilized, I would mm -hmm. say, actually. I, I, I kind of learned about this sort of late in my career, I, I would say. But I use this now just kind of like cardboard yeah. in many ways. You know, for craft projects, things like this, it cuts super easily, both with scissors and the laser. You can glue it, you can paint it. Acrylic paint works really great. So, to give a tangible example, at Christmas time, we made a, uh, a snowman that looked like he'd melted on the ah. ground. And I needed to make this styrofoam ball that was his head, yeah. uh, a top hat. Okay. And I used this, just a, a simple ring, you know, glue the top on, add a brim, paint it black. Because it's foam, it's waterproof. Yeah. Sat outside all winter, no problems at all. And I recall when we were launching Glowforge for the first time, many moons ago now, uh, but that we got questions all the time about EVA foam yeah. and or just using foam. And it was specifically often from people who do cosplay or costume design mm -hmm. um, and other things, of course, stamp making. Um, Nick and I did do a stamp making yeah. with foam stream at some point in the last few weeks or months. So uh -huh. you can probably find that on <laughs> our Glowforge TV page. So if you go to glowforge.com slash watch uh, and then to pass live streams, you should be able to find stamp making in there with foam if that's of interest to you. Um, but yeah, we, we don't sell it as a proof grade material right now, but it's easy to find, right? You said, oh, super yeah. easy, yeah. I mean, this this roll I just picked up at a craft store, something like Michael's or Joanne's. Um, you can get it in various thicknesses. Mm -hmm. This one looks like it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, this is much thicker. These, these are like for maybe creating like a tumbling area for your kids yeah, yeah. or something like that. They sell like them that. as like mats for workshops and things. Oh, yeah. And um, they, you can buy colorful ones for kids. And this can be a really inexpensive way of getting thicker material. This is half an inch thick. Mm -hmm. uh, and actually I use this. It's textured on one side as well. Yeah, I don't like the texture side, but if you turn it over, it's smooth. Mm -hmm. uh, but inside this oh, yeah, toolbox let's look at this right plus. here, I use that thick foam to create this lining. Actually, let me move it forward so you can see. So you'll see, I, I used that foam material in sheets just like this to create these cutouts for bits and pieces within this particular box. I've got a little train here, there's another section underneath. And this was a really quick and easy project, but it looks pretty cool. I've not glued it in just yet. So these layers are separate right now, but a little dab of glue will fix that all in. You almost just, don't really need to. Yeah, right, right now it's working just fine. Because I mean, if you didn't glue it in, it would be more modular. You could pop it out and add extra holes for more drill bits That's or what true. have you. Yeah. So. yeah, absolutely. But this is just one example of what you might use the foam for. Uh, and it's an example I'm going to use to show you today as we onboard this material. That makes me think too that foam could be a really great solution for those of you who make items and ship them and they might be fragile. You could do custom packaging like this. Yeah. And just make it really, you know, safe, but also beautiful. We always talk about how if you sell something like the experience of unboxing it and like the brand that you present through the yeah. through the delivery of it can be yeah. a game changer and can it can make the difference of having repeat customers or not. Oh, yeah. Here's it a reminds me of these. Yeah. yeah. We, we made these ones out of cardboard, which were great, you know, super ecologically friendly. Um, but if you had something that was maybe a little bit more delicate, a little bit more precious, um, you could absolutely take this uh, idea and use a foam instead. Um, you could combine materials too. Imagine like a custom box with a foam insert to hold the thing that you're selling. Um, so many things that you can do. And this is inexpensive, yeah. which is also a bonus. Lots of colors, easily available, cuts great on the Glowforge. And if you've made something like this, you already have the design file. You just yeah. see with this material instead. Yeah, we're filming this in May, but I feel like I'm, I'm my head is spinning with like Halloween costume <laughs> ideas now. I'm like, all the things are, we, uh, yeah. it's just been graduation and like decorating graduation caps with, um, because it's a lightweight uh -huh. yeah. and then the colors. Absolutely. Um, another thing, Nick and I were just scrolling around Instagram, trying to see what y'all are doing with foam. And we discovered the hashtag foam sculpting. Foam, foam smith. Foam smith. Yeah, I guess it's like blacksmith, you know, like forging and things like that, but with foam. So I check think. that out if you want some foam inspiration. Um, not all of the projects on that hashtag, obviously, are Glowforge made. Many people are using, you know, kind of sculpting foam with like knives and other things, mm -hmm. but um, some really good inspiration. Oh. So check that out. Absolutely. Maybe yeah. we should do a costume, like a week by week build on it kind Ooh. of thing. Ooh. Actually, I said, I'm excited <laughs> about that idea. Probably not feasible. It would be cool though. It would be really cool. 
Uh, well, should we dive in? Yeah. Let's let's get started. And as Bailey mentioned today, we want to kind of show you what it would be like to take something like this for the first time, put it in your Glowforge, and figure out how to cook through it in a pretty safe way. Yeah, because there's nothing like this in pre-built into the Glowforge settings. There's not a, a foam or a foam-like material. We've got wood, we've got leather. Because uh, sometimes, you know, if you go get a piece of wood, you can start with one of our wood yeah. presets and that's an easy starting It'll point. But here, nice. I wouldn't even know what to do. So yeah, Exactly. Yeah. It's also, I mean, just based on my experience and just my knowledge, it's a soft material. Uh, it's kind of a, a, a plastic based material too. Mm -hmm. So it's probably going to be a little melty as right. we try and cut it. So we've got to keep those things in, in mind. What we don't want to do as we're testing this is apply uh, too much power will go too slow and concentrate the heat because we might end up with just a melty mess inside your machine. Yep. So uh, <laughs> let me show you how I would approach this. Cool. Uh, and then we'll create one of the pieces for this toolbox because I do need to modify one of them. Um, <laughs> but first step, let's just throw it in the Glowforge. So is this the same foam that you used on the inside? Yes. Great. Same foam as so on the that, inside. So it'll be that thickness. So that thickness is about half an inch thick. Um, if it was thicker than half an inch, one, it might be a little bit more difficult to cut through it. Mm -hmm. The laser really can only focus for about half an inch. But mm -hmm. because this is foam, you might get away with it. Mm -hmm. It's not making it's any not promises. as dense as like a half inch of hardwood or barn wood yeah, or something. Ab mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it might be okay. Um, for cutting through thicker stuff, what you could do is create an acrylic template and then cut around with a knife. That mm. would work. Or now I'm like riffing. Woo! Take the thick <laughs> stuff. You can cut as far as you can through it. Yep. And then just follow that cut line with the knife to finish it off. Yep. That would so also it kind of makes a score for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you need to be able to get really accurate cuts that way. Um, the reason I mentioned the thickness is we don't need to take the crumb tray out. Right. I know we've been talking about that recently on the past shows. No need to take the crumb tray out. This should work just fine. And here we are inside the software. All right. This, for those of you who are not new to Glowforge, is probably <laughs> not new either. Um, unfortunately, the actual piece of foam is black on a black background, so it's kind of hard to see. I yes. apologize about that. Yeah, so this if this is your first time seeing the Glowforge software, what we're seeing right now is when we closed the lid, it took a picture. Um, the Glowforge took a picture of the inside of the, the Glowforge. Mm -hmm. And so we're seeing a black steel crumb tray, as we call it, uh, which is at the bottom. And then we're seeing the black piece of foam on top of it. And then Nick's able to move the design around you know, in real scale and real, um, you know, a real image and see where it fits the best. Absolutely. And so what I'm actually going to do is take my design, which is this thing right here, and I'm going to take one component of it so we can use that for our testing. So I've got okay. this little circle here. And this is, let's see, just over an inch wide and high, which should work perfectly for us. Uh, and I'm going to position this kind of towards the edge right now. Um, you could use a piece of scrap for this. That would work just fine. I happen to have this one piece of foam left over. We're going to throw it in. We're going to use that. If your foam doesn't fit in the Glowforge, you could just use scissors or a knife to trim it to size. Yes. <laughs> Don't need to be particularly accurate. Now, step one. Okay. With any of these materials, when you're working with something that's not proof grade, is you need to tell Glowforge how thick it is. Right. Now, we could use the set focus tool that we've talked about before, which is this one right here. Or if you know the thickness, like I do, we can go into our materials menu uncertified material and just type it in right here. And what that's going to do is modify the image. Did you see how that changed? Let yeah. Me let me show people that one more time. If I switch this back to 0 0.1, for example, you see how it that's jumps the, a little bit? The camera is assuming it's a certain height. Absolutely. And then when you tell it differently, it says, ah, oh, that, that changes things. Beep. And exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you can see how my circle is off the side of my material. Right mm -hmm. now. Like that's not where I want it to go. So it's really important that you uh, set the height so that you can position your designs accurately, just like this. So that's step one. Step two, well, the settings. Uh, for those of you who maybe are a little new to the idea of settings and what that might mean, it's basically a combination of power and speed as we move the laser over the material to be able to mark or cut through the surface. That's all it is. We spend a lot of time with our proof grade materials figuring out what that could be. Uh, and we save it all in the app for you. Really said we don't sell yep. this one just yet, unfortunately. So <laughs> we're going to figure it out together yep. right now. Uh, now to do that, I'm clicking on my uh, particular print and it's highlighting this top step. So I know this is the one that's going to apply okay. to this particular uh, piece. Now I have my settings saved in here already, but we're going to go back to the beginning, back to manual, <laughs> and we're going to make this all up as Pretend we go. Pretend we don't know. Yes. Now, importantly, when you're testing anything new, always stay with your glove, which always watch your glove, yes. just in case something does happen. Second tip, when you're learning how to cut through something, always go faster and use less power than you think you might need to. Much better not to go through it than to apply too much power and end up with a gunky, melty mess right. in the bottom of your glove. Because no more power 
So yeah, when you think of the settings, the two settings that you can ma manipulate, well, there's more than two, but the two yeah. main ones, <laughs> you can get really into it, oh, yeah. are speed and power. And that's like the, you know, the intensity of the laser for the power and then literally the speed, how fast it's moving to do, you know, cut a circle or whatnot. If it goes, if it's moving slower, um, that allows it to get through denser material. So it would be saying, don't overdo it. Because, Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's kind of a balancing mm -hmm. act. It's like an art and a science combined. Mm -hmm. And to give you an example here on my screen, Right now, we've got maximum speed and minimum power. Like, I know that's not going to cut. That's not going to help me at all. I also know that in my design, I've got some relatively sharp turns okay. that I need the laser to make. And if I try and send the laser at full speed, it's going to kind of jerk around a little bit, make some unpleasant noises. So my first step is going to be to drop the speed down a little bit. And I'm, I'm just guessing, just based on my experience, I'm going to go to about a third less than full, which is mm -hmm. 368 arbitrary units on here. And then for power, well, we got 1%. It's not, not going to be the right power right now. I need to increase that. I don't know how much to increase it by. I'm going to guess and go 35. It's pretty low, pretty pretty sure it's not going to go all the way through, but I just don't know, so mm -hmm. I'm going to try it. And then I'm going to set it to print, and that's it. And this is essentially an iterative process. You could absolutely copy and paste that circle and print four at a time with four different settings. Mm -hmm. Entirely up to you. I prefer to do it this way just because I, I lose track sometimes of which one worked and which one didn't. Yeah. My memory is not. So that's what, what you it would be. you need to line them up <laughs> and, and create four different saved presets. Yeah. And then say which one worked. I see. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, the button that's is it. glowing. Yeah. Okay, so this let's... is really quick, so I'm gonna <laughs> make sure, right? Isn't it only probably ten seconds or yeah. something? Uh it is six seconds. Okay, whoo. Yeah. All right. Don't so, uh... blink everyone. Uh <laughs> Ready? Neg yep. All right. <laughs> and my bad. I should have put it at the back, I put it at the front. Oh, where is it gonna um, be? I think it's gonna be down towards that bottom. Okay. Edge. Let's see. For the second one, I'll put it somewhere where you can see better. Oh, there we go. There we go. Oh, and I missed it. I must have, I must have changed the, the height. Oh, did you not? Maybe you didn't set it back after. It's very possible. <laughs> it's very possible. This is why we test. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, that's finished. We have our circle. We, we can, can pull it out. We can see that it... And we can see there... Here, let's look you, up close. Yeah, you see how that didn't go through that very, very far? Like we need either less speed or a lot more power. Like, that's clearly not cutting it. It also looks like it might be slightly out of focus. So it does. Let's give it a try again. Yeah. Let's point that in there. Let's close that down. And then we just repeat the process. This is maybe where we should do like an 80s montage where we speed it. Exactly. Up and and we're like high fiving yeah. and we're like, <laughs> whoa! <laughs> I like the idea. Maybe other people don't. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. I'm going to make sure I've got my 0 0.5 in here. I'm going to go back over to my setting, which is this one right here. Um, now, we were going too fast and not enough power. I want to keep nice. it kind of fast. Nice. So this time I'm going to boost the power. Because of how significantly we weren't cutting through, I'm going to go all the way up to 80. <gasps> Let's try that. <laughs> Whoa. I, I know. I know. Let's just <laughs> see what happens. All right. Did we set focus this time or just set the... I just sent the same prints. Let's see what happens. Okay. We can try set focus next time if we need to. Well, if it's not near the edge, then I guess it's not as, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not as worrisome. Uh, and so you see how quickly and easily we can do this. Like I said, just start yeah. fast, low power, just so you can observe how the material reacts uh, and then increase it from there. We've got another button okay. press. We'll smack that. Uh, we're focusing on cutting right now. Um, scoring would be the same. We're just reducing the power so we don't go all the way through. Um, we're not going to touch on engraving right now just because that's a whole other conversation. There's our two circles. Six seconds, pull it out. And it's quick with these quick prints. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. So much better. So you actually Look see side by side. Look at the difference between those two. So that was 30%, that was 80%. So do that again, we didn't have... 30% right here, yep. and then 80% right here. Look at that. So you can good. really see the depth. Yeah, really and it nice just edge looks too. crisper. Exactly, mm -hmm. the edge looks better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All, All right. right, we're almost so, there. I think we're, we're almost there. So I think <laughs> now I'm going to go up to, a, excuse me, 100% precision power. Uh, okay. Um, and I'll put this one towards the back this time so everyone can see on the, on the phone. All right. 100% um, precision power, and I'm going to reduce the speed just a little bit as well. So 100% right here. <laughs> Excuse the siren if you can hear it. We're here in downtown Seattle. <laughs> I'm going to go down to... We've got to the windows open. Three. Yeah, it's kind of warm in the studio today. Yes. I didn't even think about closing them. I've got to be no, honest. No, me neither. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, that's just how it is. Uh, here it comes. I'll we'll just give it a second. I like it. It's a real city, city vibe, city yeah. soundtrack. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah, you got the murmur outside, traffic yeah. noise, occasional <laughs> siren. Uh, 
It's a good place to be. It's also sunny today, which is really nice. Yes. I feel like spring is really, uh, finally, finally rearing its head. Late heads. May. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I changed the speed on this from about, was it 360 to 300? Let's just see how this is going to affect okay. our actual print time. So we've got seven seconds so, instead of six. Oh, whew. I know. I don't. Do you, if you have, if so. you don't have time to stick around, <laughs> we understand. Uh, okay. All right. Now this one should go up towards the top. We'll see how this goes. And there it is. All right. Beautiful, man. There's something very satisfying about those quick, it's crisp awesome. cuts. Yeah, I, I, I think it's really satisfying to see something cut a perfect circle too. Oh yeah. Because that's so hard to do. Oh, we're almost there. Oh. Now. You can see, very, very, so very you close. you could pop that out, I probably. probably could, or I could just follow it with a knife. Exactly. Yeah. Now, I did notice this line kind of looks a little thick, right? It, it Thicker looks than like this one. Yeah, it looks like it's maybe not focused very well. So perhaps we're, we're kind of hitting our maximum height mm -hmm. and we're sending the print, um, but we're not really focused very effectively on here. So. I'm gonna grab some material. Let's take the crumb tray out. Yeah, let's try it. I'm gonna, I'm so gonna... basically what we try to do is get the material in this very specific uh, sweet spot of that the blazer can focus perfectly. And if, if the material, when put on top of the crumb tray, is a little bit higher than that, the laser's not able to focus. So what we're gonna do is use material. We're gonna prop, we're gonna prop this piece that we're gonna cut up, cut up onto something. <laughs> we're gonna use pieces Words of proof material because that's Here what we, we have. But um, we're going to prop it up so that it's the same or that it's just the height of the crumb tray and that's going to allow a crisper focus. So that's what we're doing here. So we're going to use just scraps of other proof grade material, which mm -hmm. I understand is probably confusing. We're doing material on top material. <laughs> um, and then you can see this side by side. Ooh, I think we need a little bit more. Yeah, I'll show you from the profile right here. You can see, what I see can a little sneak peek of our studio there. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> um, but here is, so here's the crumb tray that we just I'm took out. Run you can away see it's a like second. a couple right of Nick's looking for material. <laughs> <laughs> couple inches uh, right here. We're building this up. And then the goal is to get this so it's just above this height when it's in the bed um, to create that perfect focus that we're going for. And we're being, you know, a little bit fussy, like, this is still a great circle <laughs> and would work and would uh, meet the needs of your our project. But, um, you know, we're being laser nerds here. We can here. do better, we, right? Yes, we can do better. Exactly. Okay. Let's Perfect. So. It's maybe just a little bit too much. Let me think. Yeah, I think we can take one of those out. Mm -hmm. and let's try that. Oh. Oh my gosh. Well, that's Ouch. perfect. <laughs> that Did you just hit your head on, on the, the sandbag? The light? Yeah. Oh no. Is that a thick one? All right. Let's this take one's a, thick. Let's yeah. take a medium one out instead. That looks good. All right. All right. So, so check that out. That's what we decided to do. As you can see, yeah, the it's not perfectly black. flat, but it's about a quarter of an inch above that. Yeah. Nothing that should get us what we need. Okay. But all I'm going to do is pop our crumb tray down on the floor, and we'll put this whole stack in the bottom <laughs> of the wood forge like this. Here, I'll hand it to you. I'm at an awkward <laughs> angle to do that. It's always so funny that we film these standing behind the Glowforge. It makes sense for presenting to you all, but it's yeah. just obviously never how you would work <laughs> with your Glowforge is from behind it. So. Yeah, you are right. <laughs> all right, here we go. So oh, TV, it's scan. so silly. Yeah. <laughs> it's also funny, I think, when we're doing these quick prints, the yeah. print itself is so short. Yeah. But like our internet speed here is kind of slow, so the setup takes mm -hmm. four times longer. Oh, yeah, we still haven't got full internet in the yeah. studio. So, and hey, these are... We've got done a whole bunch of prints in here. It's just, yes, we have to be a bit patient with the upload step. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to do step focus this time. So what this means is the head's going to come across. Okay. It's going to take a measurement of this material and focus the lens based on the actual height rather than the, the number that I typed in. Now, of course, hindsight's a tricky beast. We could have absolutely started with step focus and maybe we'd already have our setting. Apologies. Hey, but this is interesting. This is real, to see right? Some this trial is and real error. Yeah, this, this is... is what it's like. I mean, I've seen Nick spend... 10 hour days at work testing single materials. <laughs> those, those were the days, yeah. really. those were the days. <laughs> All right, that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna click this. We have our speed. Now it'd be interesting now, in theory, this is gonna be focused better. So it might cut through. Let's give it a try. Okay. Uh, and I put this towards the top. So we've got seven seconds. Seven again. seconds. The button hit is that button. blinking. I'm gonna hit it. As some of you may be noticing, uh, wondering as well, once you've done all of this work, like what does that mean? Oh yeah, look how much crisper that is. 
Wow. Uh, you can really thickness. tell what the thickness of the line. Mm -hmm. That is incredible. Yeah. And this is melty too. So the line kind of changes based on the amount of heat that's being applied. Okay. So check right this out. So this is the one that we just did before, before removing the crumb tray. And we hypothesized that perhaps this material is just a little too thick. So we got, we were too high for that sweet spot of focus, removing the crumb tray and then creating that higher on our own. We exactly. got this. I mean, look so, at the difference of those, the thicknesses and that right? indicates a more in focus print. Mm -hmm. I clearly did a bad job of positioning that next to the other one. <laughs> but you know, that's it. Okay, <laughs> Nick, yeah, it's right <laughs> next to it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're almost, almost through this through. time. Almost okay. through, So I reckon we can get it this time around. Okay. Fourth time's a charm? Four, fifth yeah. time, fifth time's a charm, <laughs> as they say. Very popular phrase mm -hmm. in, the, in the laser community. I think three is ambitious, you know, like. <laughs> some, I mean, with some experience, you can get lucky. Like I probably could have got a bit closer, you yeah. know. <laughs> but I wanted to show you what it's like, what it's really like, real laser world. And again, this would work. We're just trying to get it perfect. Like, I mean, like we do when we dial in our proof grade settings, like that's yeah, what right. you expect, right? You want it to work perfectly every time. So if there's a little bit better we can get it, we're gonna find it. We, absolutely, yeah. And you know, not throwing shade on store-bought plywood or anything like that. There's definitely a time and a place, yeah. but this is the type of thing you might have to do if you do buy materials from other sources. I do it all the time. I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it, but if you are looking for just that idea to reality without worrying about the middle of it, proof grades, it's, it's very good for that. Yes. Yep. I'm biased, I know. I, I, I get that. <laughs> Sorry. But I do think it's a good product. All right. I'm going to adjust the speed. So right now we're at 300. I'm going to go down to, let's see, given the way the material's reacting, I'm going to go down to 200. Okay. Let's try this. So sorry, you just did power down to 200? Speed. Oh, speed to so, 200. Yeah. So right now I'm at 100% precision power. And while this is thinking, a quick note about that. Precision power is a way that we manipulate the power that comes out of the tube so it's mm -hmm. really consistent. Um, mm. So for some things, that's what you really want. Maximum power dumps all of the power it can into the material, but it can vary a little bit. And so sometimes you might get more power than less power. It's just a way the machine is going to mm -hmm. control. Uh, so I'm going to stick with precision power because we want a good, nice, precise cut. Uh, so I'm going to slow everything down. Buttons flashing. Okay, this could be it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Will it actually like fall through? That's I don't a good know. question. Cause, yeah, because it's supported from underneath. Right. I don't really know. It's a lot slower. It's eight seconds this one. It didn't fall, but it could also no. be that it just kind of stuck into that. Yeah. So let's give okay. it a try and see. Let's see how oh, oh, I can see through it, you guys. <laughs> I can see you. So I think oh, look at that. <gasps> we'll consider that yeah, a success. That look at this. Great. So, And I'm just going to check the back of this too, just to see. You see how clean that line is? There's no charring or melting or anything like wow. that. Wow. I would say that's a good result. That and looks pretty good to me. Here's the piece. I mean, wow. Yeah. Right? We didn't fry it. We didn't fry it. We started slow. Uh, sorry, we started quick with low power. We saw how the material reacted. We gradually increased the power and decreased the speed until we got the result we wanted. And that's how it it's took done. five tries. <laughs> that was pretty easy. And one thing we didn't mention is often, maybe not with foam, but with many materials, we would probably apply a masking because for some materials, yeah. it might be impossible to achieve a beautiful cut without getting some smoke effect. Mm -hmm. Actually, I think there's a tiny smoke effect. It's just hard to see because this is dark. So if we were working with the white foam, for example, we might be way more picky and then yeah. we would need to do a masking or something like that because this is a little hard to sand, isn't it? Uh, to clean. get to, yeah. to clean, yes. Yeah. 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 Um, um, interestingly, it's really easy to sand. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, I don't it just think you need apart. to. <laughs> yeah, it's, you really can. It's, it's, I think that's why cosplayers like it, because you can kind of sculpt it like it would be Oh, wood and get textures. Like uh -huh. So that's something we're not talking about, because we were just showing you how to do settings. But I suppose if we wanted to do one double the length of this, we could show you how to manipulate for engraved settings yeah. for, um, mm -hmm. for foam, too, because that's where I've seen really amazing cosplay uh, is, you know, like armor that looks like it has different... Um, hardware on it but it's all just done yeah. with like 3d engrave and then painted like i have i've never tried to 3d engrave foam but that's Ooh. a really interesting idea yeah okay maybe that's, Perhaps for that's a future day. topic yes. yeah we're uh, this is fun we're having fun <laughs> with this so now, i will mention after all that hard work there's no need to reach for your notebook and your pen and paper you can go into your software pick the setting that we just developed hit the little plus button right here and you can save this as i'm gonna call it eva foam floor mats and did you want to print the piece? Yeah, why not? Yeah. And then we can, uh, I'll position it so people can actually see what's being printed. Will it fit on this one or uh, this one it is the in size here of this, the lid of this box. So I think you'll be okay. I think we'll be able to fit it around Perfect. our, let's, let's see. We let's love using scraps. Yeah, absolutely. 
And this is scrap that I bought from home too. This is not gold for design right now. This is my precious floor mat material. Yeah, well, because I don't think you bragged or mentioned uh, Nick, but like <laughs> Nick made this gorgeous uh, toolbox for his wife for Mother's Day, which is a pretty oh, yeah. cool present. A, a DIY themed uh, Mother's Day. I year. love that. Uh, we've been, we've been, you know, figuring out how to make the right toolbox for her. Mm -hmm. um, I have far too many tools. <laughs> She never knows where any of them are. Right. So she wanted her own stash. That makes sense. So yeah, she just picked, the, picked some things she just liked. Just the important ones. I added some additional ones. So I think it turned out really nice. Yeah, this is great. I know what most of these are and how to use them. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and I have both bought houses in the last year, so we're DIYing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All, all right. right. So we how have long is this print? Focus that. Let's see. So I'm going to move this. Oh, we're not there yet. I'm going to grab this. I know. You're very impatient. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> move this over here. It's kind of hard to see where the yeah the cuts are now it's I'm so dark. looking at this kind of looks like my circles might get in the way of this print I think my okay my, my so should we use this piece instead then I'm just wondering you see how I've angled it right now oh I think we can do it like this let's try that wow let's try that I'm going to go up to the top here I'm going to choose my EVA floor mat setting Looks like if I click on some of these, we've got some other ones here. So you know, back, EVA floor mats right there. And I'm just hovering over these steps just to make sure we covered everything. So that one we don't need to do. This one, EVA floor mats, EVA floor mats, EVA floor mats. And that's it. Great. That good. So they were all separate elements, and that's why you had to yes. make sure yeah. that the setting was applied to each one. Depending on your design, sometimes you'll just have to apply it once. Um, yeah, that was just how the file was made. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's it. And this is it? two minutes. Yeah. Two? Oh, absolutely. wow. We should get plenty of plenty, yeah. <laughs> plenty of printing footage from this. Yes. Thing. How fun. I am into foam. I think it's pretty cool. I, I really do like it a lot. It's one of those materials that I, every time I use it, I think, why don't I use this more? Mm -hmm. And then I don't use it more. Uh, I think we were saying uh, earlier when we were chatting about foam, I remember people always writing in, uh, asking about foam, lasers and foam. Can I use foam? And uh -huh. we were, we didn't really know. And it's because it, and this was back in 2015 when we first launched. Um, it just wasn't as widely available. That, yeah, I think that's true. And it wasn't Actually. as widely known that it was laser safe mm -hmm. and we just weren't sure, but yeah. it is. So, it works, um, it but yeah, fine. EVA foam. I don't actually know what EVA stands for, do you? I do not hmm. remember. Let's hmm. look it up really quick. I bet you it's a word that we can't pronounce. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Let's let's just see. Uh, EVA foam. Some material science words. Yeah. <laughs> EVA foam sheets. Ethylene vinyl acetate. Okay. Yeah. So even though the word vinyl is in there, it's still laser safe for some reason. Seems to be. Yeah. Yeah. I use it a lot. So here we are. One minute forty left to go on this one. And you can see actually some of those pieces have dropped this time, which is always really satisfying to see. And the cool thing about this is we can walk so precisely. You know, you've got to absolutely cut this out with a craft knife. That would work totally fine. But, mm -hmm. you know, here we can get the kind of precision we're looking for when we need things to fit with friction. Yes. Um, and I, I just took, um, just to give you an idea of the process, for these particular tools, I took a, laid it on a surface like this, and I took a photo from above uh, and I drew around it in my software and then I measured one part of the tool, say the, uh, the, the length, and I made my drawing that length, which automatically, if I constrained the width and the height, uh, made the width the right size too. And that way I could print it, test the fit really quickly, and then that was so it. So you took a photo and then you use like Illustrator yeah. to create the file? Yeah, yeah. Inkscape, mm -hmm. any kind of vector program, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. It's just lines. Yeah, just lines. All the same color. All the same color. Mm -hmm. You probably could, just thinking out loud, you probably could use trace for this too. With things that you could draw around, you could absolutely put them on a piece of paper, draw around them like this, use trace, you'd click inside the line which would define the cuts, and then you'd be able to cut that shape wow. out. Wow. I don't know if it would, would it be as accurate? You could then use the offset line tool okay. with a negative number to make it a little bit smaller. There we go. And then you'd probably get, because the cool thing about foam is kind of stretchy, right? So the so, offset line tool is a premium feature. That is a premium so feature. So if yeah. you are Glowforge, Glowforge owner, our Glowforge print app is always free to use. You can always print for free as many times as you want, but and with your own designs. But we do have a premium subscription that gives you things like like that tool, yep. like a stamp maker, like a catalog of fonts and designs and uh, clip art yeah. and all sorts all of stuff. So, and we're yeah. adding to it all the time. So check that out if you have not already. All right, and then we have our print. 
Looks like it's done. Wow. Let's pull that out. So fun. Oh, it, def it definitely fit. I'm glad you rotated that. <laughs> oh, also, I have a toddler at home. And so right now we have a whole bunch of like foam tools that you can I mean, play with, which perfect. is pretty cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> These pieces just pop out like this. So cool. You know, it's really, really easy to do. And in my particular example, I kind of built this up in layers. Because you'll see, for example, this screwdriver, although it fits in the hole, um, it is too tall, tall to be held by the To be the supported. Itself. So you yeah. did two pieces. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah. Um, and if you swing over to that one for mm -hmm. a bit, you'll see how I did the cuts only on certain layers. So for example, this yep. pen slot and the pencil slot, I only cut them on the top layer. But this one is on three. three. Yeah, this one's three. So you wow. can see these last cuts. Oh, very right clever. Yeah. And again, all I had to do in the software was just take away these pieces, run another print, and that was it. Wow. Simple as Gosh. That. Imagine the like custom Glowforge station. Oh, oh, sorry, I moved it. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm like, uh. <laughs> yeah. Imagine the custom Glowforge station for all of your Glowforge tools that you could make. Yeah, and, and the thing is, everyone likes different tools, right? Different stuff. You might have your favorite pen or something like that, mm -hmm. so you can make this to fit. Gotta have a, a slot for the Gorilla Tape. Exactly. This is a, yeah. <laughs> this is a Glowforge must have. We didn't use it during the stream, but we always have. Uh, the super sticky tape on hand because it helps remove the masking, especially from engraves. Otherwise you're sitting there peeling it off with your fingers, uh -huh. which while it's therapeutic, is not very time efficient, uh, especially when we're on camera, so. <laughs> very true, very, very true. Well, that was super fun. Uh, I thought that was fun, yeah, I let us, that was helpful. Yeah, let us know, um, uh, we have a suggestions box on the page that you're on, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, if, <laughs> if so, we'd love to hear, um, you know, the kind of prints that you'd like to see, tips that you wanna see, tutorials that you want, anything else. Um, tell us what you thought about this, if foam is cool or or not. Um, we just want to hear from you. So yeah. thanks for joining, and we'll see you another time. Absolutely. Right, thanks, bye. everybody. Bye.